I feel like a video needs to be made on the Staccato 46. I waited for rolls, and it feels like since this is a 180 scout, a lot of people are kind of swayed away from it in general just because of that. This is more of a PvE scout that does some crazy good things. And in the Crucible, it's midline, but these are about to be a little bit better in there soon. It is a sleeper. It's got very little street cred, and some of that is because of the obtainability. This is a world drop, similar to Cantata Funnel Web, large loot pool, and it's RNG. You can get it from the Gunsmith, Gunsmith Rank Ups, Ingram Turn-Ins of the Crypt Arc, but if you want one, the best bet is to focus them at the Crown of Sorrow for the world weapons. That's how I've been getting mine. And what I value, what I want to bring to your attention, is that since this is a scout rifle, you have near infinite range. The most range you can get out of a weapon, being able to do what this thing does, and you can build crazy into it. Now the closest competition is the Strident Bow which is arguably just as hard to obtain. But it's the fact that it's one of only seven weapons currently that can roll incandescent. This is a solar scout. And when you build into it with its range, and there's even more than this, there are some strong outcomes. To me, there's no doubt that Incandescent is one of the best perks in the game right now. Might of Many, Drang are excellent choices for it. They're even better because they can get enhanced Incandescent, but this has precision and range. It also has a really cool interaction with champions. So when they drop, look at the perks. The two roles that I have with Incandescent are Well-Rounded and Compulsive Reloader. Well-Rounded is going to be better for PvE, and remember with Incandescent, defeating a target spreads Scorch to those nearby. More powerful combatants cause Scorch in a larger radius, so this by itself is good. In areas with harder content, or just in general, you can stay back. Land final blows, weaken the area. We do have Unstoppable Scout this season, and we're going to have it again later on at some point. The Scorch spread will actually stun a surrounding champion, that's also pretty nice. One of the best parts about it though, why I'm really liking it, is how it pairs with Solar 3.0 and the mods that we have. As an example, I'm on Dawn Chorus, I have four fragments on, and with Hunter, I can have five fragments, so I'm gonna get to that, but we have Ashes, that's for applying more Scorch, Empyrean, Solar Weapon and Solar Ability Final Blows extend the duration of Radiant and Restoration, Torches, Powered Melee Attacks make you and nearby allies Radiant, Solus, Radiant and Restoration Effects applied to you have an increased duration, so we then go to the Artifact, and this mod right here should be used more in general. Very powerful, Razor Precision. While Radiant, Solar Precision Final Blows cause targets to ignite. And you pair that right next to it with Fulmination. Your Ignitions do increased damage in an increased radius. So with Dawnblade here, I can get off a melee, become Radiant. I get though a Healing Grenade. So now I have Restoration and Radiant active. As I'm getting kills with Staccato, it's extending those things. But as I land headshots, there are nukes going off. This is a good example because right here, Mida, Drang, wouldn't do very hot. I'm hitting them as they're coming from spawn far away from a distance and nuking the area. That's the value. And note, Razor Precision is also really good with Polaris Lance and other solar weapons, but with this, it has that first little explosion because of Incandescent, Spread Scorch, then Ignition, and more. And on Hunter, you could add Char, a fifth. Your Ignition spreads Scorch to affected targets. So at a distance, massive AoE, it does great. But even when Razor Precision goes away, it's still great by itself. I was doing leg armor farming in a lost sector with a Seacant Voidwalker. Same deal, at a distance, spreading Scorch with precision. There was an unstoppable champion. It could stun them as they're walking by. It was awesome. Due to the landscape of RNG, all you really want in PvE is incandescent, if you're going for it. And me making this video is because of that. And with something like this, I've been there, I think we've all been there. An activity wants a scout for a champion. You see that it's solar burn. You start kind of looking around, well this is where this can come in. We have Outlaw, Triple Tap, Shoot to Loot great pairings. It does have adaptive munitions. That's also going to be an option. We have shoot to loot, explosive payload. There are things that can do that, but when it comes to PvE, all I really wanted and needed was incandescent, and the rest I just slot in best available, and that's what I recommend that you do as well. So if it drops, take it for a spin. It's great with what you can do and the range that it has. When it comes to the Crucible, it does have Suro Synergy, and yeah, you can use that in PvE as well, but in the Crucible, you can activate it pretty much before any gunfight that you want. In this scout, if you take into account base stability, double unflinching, tier 10 resilience, and Suro Synergy, it's about 52% flinch reduction. And that's just reloading right into Suro Synergy at base. 
it gets better as you add in more stability. And these scouts are getting a good PvP buff. They increase the body damage from 34 to 38. The crit moves from 54.4 to 60.8. So in game, it will say 61, just like right now it says 55, but it's 60.8. They say you can two crit two body against 197 HP. That's a relaxed TTK, 50% accuracy. So the archetype is about to get better, or at least easier to use. With a damage bump, Staccato does offer a couple good things, but I think in the Crucible sandbox, other scouts are gonna be just a little bit better. Things like box breathing, other damage perks and when it goes live i'm going to talk about a couple of those in a dedicated video but it does have focus fury that's what you've been seeing in the pvp gameplay only precision weapons and pulses this does work so if you're on a midtown the new large map just large maps in general land half the magazine as precision hits you get 20 percent bonus damage for 11 seconds and you can refresh it loop it it currently does 66 to the crit when you have focus fury you can three crit that's a 0.67 and when the update comes focus fury will deal 72.9 along with that is 45.6 to the body so it's going to deal 191 with the two crit one body my role is currently triple tap focus fury and it's a win lose type of situation because with triple tap it is giving me more chances to land crits to proc the perk the downside though, is I can't reload, I can't stow it, I can't put it away. Therefore, I can't use Suro Synergy. So again, something like this is fine on larger maps. And when they become a two crit, two body, it's gonna be even better. It's a very reserved play style, but it packs a punch. So if you're interested in something like this on Staccato, it would be Triple Tap, Outlaw, or Under Pressure with Focus Fury. It has a base range of 72 meters. That's 39 range, a two time zoom, but it's on a scout rifle. So adding a little bit more won't hurt. Taking a little bit away won't really hurt either. And a good option will be to buff your stability when you can. That goes for MK and controller because it helps combat flinch. And this has one of the higher ends of the flinch multiplier as far as reduction. It's got 58 base recoil. Arrowhead gets it to 68. And honestly, at base, I don't think it's too bad. It's a scout. It's gonna bounce a little bit. It's gonna be really helped by the stability. And I personally throw on a full auto mod. So if it does fall, the only time I ever recommend compulsive reloader is on a Suros weapon because you can abuse Suros energy. It's plus 50 reload and a reload scaler. So it's a fast one. You can go something like compulsive reloader, explosive payload. And you have to think you are at a distance. You are being too aggressive with this thing. So if you're in a lane, you can do a quick reload, aim down sights. Zero Synergy is up, get into a gunfight, deal flinch with explosive payload, and you're kind of still in the lane, well, you can shoot a shot, do another reload, a fast reload, get back into Zero Synergy, and just kind of loop it out that way. I did go over Tears of Contrition, the Kinetic 180 Scout, and I actually really enjoyed it. A lot of it's because I can craft it, and I never review 180 Scouts, but I reviewed that one, and I wanted to show how no distractions, explosive payload, and max stability does, and it performs well on larger maps in the current sandbox. And again, it's gonna be better later on. Staccato for the Crucible though, it's not a world beater. It's midline. It does do well when you play within the constraints of what it needs you to do, like Suro Synergy, utilizing that with Explosive Payload or Focus Fury. It also has Rampage, I wanna bring that up real quick. At times one stack is 10%, so in the future, it's gonna do 66.8. It's gonna say 67, but it's 66.8, so it's gonna three tap. It's basically like Focus Fury right now. So Rampage is gonna be an option too, but the main chase for it really is for PVE with Incandescent. I think it's really good. It might not be your cup of tea, but when they do drop, look for them. There's a chance that you're gonna like it, especially if you have been building into Incandescent and enjoying that type of build craft. This can do it really well. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. Let's talk about Staccato 46 down below. Have you tried the Incandescent roll? What do you think about it? And Bungie is kind of weird with perks sometimes. I do hope that Incandescent comes to more weapons in future seasons, but there's a possibility that only this set is going to have it for a while. Let's talk about it. Thank you for watching. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy.